All right, good morning. This is Lesson 84, and this is on uh, possible conflicts in terms of macroeconomic policy. Now, in a sense, we've already covered this, but we're just looking at it a little bit more from a monetar monetarist perspective. And really, if you're a monetarist, if you take the supply side view, they believe that in the long run, that all macro objectives are compatible and you can achieve low employment, price stability, high economic, high economic growth and a balance of payments equilibrium, which are the four macro objectives in the long run. OK, now the, what, what the Munchers believe in, they believe in the long run Phillips curve. Remember, it's being vertical. They believe that you control the money supply and that controls inflation and that at all times you use supply side economics. You create a lot of labor market flexibility. So we take the example of Greece. According to, to the monetarists, what should have happened in, in, in Greece is when times were hard, wages should have fallen by a lot. And because wages would have, would, have, would have fallen, therefore firms would have employed more people. That would have attracted foreign direct investment to that country. So really, the problems of, of Greece are really a supply side problem. Now, to a degree, there's, sort of a, there's an element of truth in that. That certainly would have helped the situation. But there's lots of institutional reasons about why Greece had, had a, a lot of problems. OK, so this is, uh, this is sort of a monetarist view but obviously all objectives are compatible in the long run if you can believe in this model here so you, this which is a Keynesian model actually but if you increase AS and AD at the same rate then we are going to achieve non-inflationary growth and let's hope that the supply side kicks in more exports and then you can have a balance of payments equilibrium so you can look at it from a Keynesian perspective or a monetarist perspective the key key thing about the monetarism for me is that it shows how important supply side economics is. Okay, we start off with the monetarist argument over here, which is this particular, this particular diagram moving from A, B, and C. And if you can remember what happens is, as a monetarist, okay, you can decide to increase aggregate demand. What happens is you get a rise in real GDP, but a rise in prices as well. So therefore there is a trade-off between uh, inflation and unemployment. However, and this is the key thing here, because the labour market tightens, workers then ask for higher wages and we move from SRAS to SRAS dash. So actually by increasing AD in the long run is completely pointless because you end up at the same level of national income, but you just end up with a much higher price level. It's increased by that much there. So that's a monstrous argument. So the implication of that is that using demand side policies will never improve the economy and in the long run will always lead to higher inflation. Argument one. The next bit that we came across was the Phillips curve. And remember, I always give this one a really, really hard time uh, because it was based upon data from 1861 to 1913. And then there was a relationship, remember all that, between 1913 to 1957. And this is the one diagram that candidates love drawing in the, in the exam. Now, the reason why I dislike it is because there are loads of times in the British economy where we've had falling unemployment and falling inflation, e.g. right now. And there's lots of times in the economy where we've had stagflation, where we've had high inflation and also higher unemployment. But there is an element of truth in it. An element of truth in it is even if we look at the Keynesian diagram, as we increase demand, there, there, there could well be a trade off as you approach full employment between inflation and unemployment. And obviously, if you have really high unemployment, then it's likely that wages are likely to be lower. And if wages are lower, uh, that will therefore reduce inflation. However, I think the long run Phillips curve is much more relevant today. I'm not going to go through all the implications of, of that, but the natural rate of unemployment is made up of voluntary unemployment. And you can remember when I started teaching this on a previous video, that I had a few complications with it because it basically says, well, structural workers who are unemployed and friction workers are unemployed, they could all accept lower wages and therefore they are voluntarily unemployed. OK, however, if we accept what Freeman says, he talks about the long run flips curve. There's no point just increasing AD because it's, it's just going to increase inflation. If you try and reduce unemployment below the natural rate of unemployment, which we think is roughly at about 5% in the UK. 
So the only way in which we can actually reduce unemployment and not get inflation is to use a lot of supply side policies. So we need to shift that long run Phillips curve inwards. That's the key part of that particular diagram. So the implication is we reduce the natural run employment and then we're able to run the economy, the economy at high levels of demand. OK, and then, you know, then we can go through all the supply side policies. Always candidates feel, I think it is worthwhile knowing all the different supply side policies. But when it gets to an exam where you've got 40 minutes or 50 minutes to write an essay is, you're not going to have a lot of time to explain every single, every single theory. So I always tend to co concentrate on corporation tax, which does appear to conform to the Laffer curve. And as you reduce it, you tend to get more taxation revenue back, which is a win-win situation, which is a very, very powerful argument. But also, at the same time, if you can introduce labour market flexibility, zero-hour contracts, you can reduce the power of the trade unions, then wages will fall, then there's likely to be a rise in employment because it's cheaper to employ people. But we've got also all these arguments, privatisation, deregulation, free trade, all of those force firms to be more innovative, more creative, they'll think of ways of reducing costs and increasing productivity and that shifts out the, the short and aggregate supply curve as well as the long run aggregate supply curve. Right, so the basic argument, yes of course it is possible to achieve all macro objectives at the same time. However, right now in the UK we have a lot of issues that are a problem. Uh, national debt is a real problem, 80% of GDP. How are we going to get over the fact of cost push inflation because we're using up more and more resources but maybe once again we can innovate our way out of that particular problem the banking system has created loads of issues uh, i'm going to be giving some lectures on that on the systematic risk of a banking crisis on the national economy and that's really what caused the recession in 2008 although jeff rubin says it was still oil prices and also the fact we've, we've been printing loads of money. Remember, I've spoken about this before. This is a major, major risk for the UK economy, even though it has created growth, which is really, really good. OK, so basically, if you're a monetarist, this is what you want to do. You want to reduce the natural rate of unemployment, shift the long run Phillips curve inwards. You want to control the money supply because that will control inflation, although that theory has come under a lot of stick. But basically, you want to lose, use loads and loads of supply side economics and that's why all the macro objectives are compatible in the long run. However, I think this model is actually better. I think supply side is really, really important, obviously, but don't underestimate the importance of demand side economics, which is a low interest rates and uh, fiscal policy. OK, so yes, if you get an essay on it, it's very, very difficult to do. Put it into context in the year 2014. Right, e.g. if we use the example of a fall in the exchange rate, there is massive conflict there because that may lead to cost push inflation. However, all, all objectives are compatible in the long run.